All right, class. So this video is going to be about quantum numbers and electron configurations and how they're related and how we can sort of deal with them and what they really mean and what we can do with them um, and all of that sort of stuff. So uh, basically, I'm just going to be talking about the different things. I'll show some examples, but this is sort of an overview of how we put all this stuff together. So we've got all these tables here. I've got my quantum numbers table. I've got this uh, little graph that I've been talking about in class a lot that I say I really like, and we'll talk about that and what that means. We've got this sort of um, electron configuration table that we're, we'll talk about filling in, um, and and we've got a periodic table, right? So we've got a periodic table that we'll we'll talk about as well. So the first thing that I want to talk about is an electron configuration for carbon. So we'll just choose carbon arbitrarily. So let's sort of clean this up. And if we start with carbon, carbon's right here. It's got a number six. So a single carbon atom will have six protons and six electrons. So if we start with a single carbon atom, we know that it has six protons because it's number six and it will have six electrons. And what we're gonna be concerned about is the electrons and the electronic configuration for those electrons. So this little table here, this is gonna show us how the different orbitals are gonna have different energy levels. And so as we go up, we're gonna have greater and greater energy. And here we've sort of offset the p orbitals from the s orbitals. A lot of times we'll just show these all in, an, in, a, in a row, basically, one on top of the other. But the first thing we're gonna do is if I want to have the electron configuration for carbon, I'm going to fill those six electrons into this table. So I'm going to start at the bottom. That's going to be the lowest energy. So the first two electrons, they're going to fill in into the 1s orbital. The next two electrons will fill into the 2s orbital, so two electrons per orbital. And then the last two electrons will fill into the 2p orbital. So I put two electrons in there. The way that this is related to this table is if I think about where carbon is on this you know periodic table carbon is is about right here right and so what this table is sort of saying is that when I look at my periodic table right if I look at this table these 1s electrons they're gonna fill in for hydrogen and helium then if, if I get to 2s I'm gonna start filling for lithium and beryllium and then the 2p that's going to be boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon so on and so forth and that's going to be the the level that i'll be filling in the electrons okay so now how how do electron configurations um, relate to quantum numbers so the whole idea with quantum numbers is that each of these electrons so each of these electrons in my carbon atom we can assign a different set of carbon numbers for each one of those electrons. So each one of these electrons will have its own unique set of N, L, M sub L, and M sub S values that will correlate to these two electrons. So for instance, if I wanna talk about my single carbon atom, and I wanna talk about these 1s electrons, so I've got two electrons in the 1s orbital. All right, so two electrons in the 1s orbital. And each one of these electrons is going to have a different quantum number. So the quantum number, so I'm going to write Qn, or Q number for quantum number, for these would be n is equal to 1. So the n value is just going to be 1 here. L equals 0. And if we look at our table, if n equals 1, the only L value is 0. There's only one L value that's allowed, right? Remember how we, we derive the L values. The L values would be any value from zero up to N minus one. So if N is one, the L value is zero. That's the only L value that we can have. M sub L, again, in this case, is gonna only be equal to zero. And then our M sub S is gonna equal plus one half for one of these electrons or minus one half. So the way that I would think about this is that these quantum numbers, this top set here, that would be the quantum address of this one electron. And then M sub S equals minus one half, that's the quantum address that tells you where this other electron is. N equals one, L equals zero, 
s orbital, m sub l equals zero, only one of those, and then m sub s equals minus one half would be the spin down electron. Let's go ahead and do that for the rest of these. Two electrons in the 2s orbital. So the quantum numbers, n equals two in this case, right? So we're in the second quantum energy level. L equals zero. So in my n equals two energy level, I can have L equals zero or L equals one. And L equals zero is gonna correlate to the s orbital. So L values equal to zero, always are gonna be s orbitals. L values equal to one, that's gonna tell us p orbitals. But we're talking about the 2s orbital right now, so my L value is gonna be equal to zero. In that case, m sub l is also equal to zero, right? That's the only m sub l value I have for L equals zero, only one value there. And then again, m sub s equals plus one half or minus one half. So this top line here, this would correlate to the quantum address of this electron going up. So I would say plus one half spin wise would be the spin up electron and the minus one half would be the address of the, of the down pointing arrow. Lastly, we've got two electrons in the 2p orbital level, and I'm saying orbital level here because there's actually three orbitals in that p you know, orbital system. So the quantum address for these, n is gonna equal two, right? We're still in the, the energy level two. L is gonna equal one. And L is gonna equal one because we're talking about the p orbitals, right? So if I go back to my table over here, now we're sort of at this level, n equals two, L equals one. I've got three different m sub L values. So m sub L can equal minus one, or zero, or plus one. So each one of these is really corresponding to a different one of my orbitals in this level. So this one we could say m sub L equals minus one. This one will say m sub L equals zero. And this one would be m sub L equals positive one. And I'm arbitrarily assigning those, right? But the whole point here is that each one of these m sub L values corresponds to one of the different p orbitals. And there's three of those p orbitals, right? Number of orbitals is three. Then m sub s for each one of these could equal plus one half or minus one half. m sub s equals plus one half or minus one half. And the same thing for the last one. So now in terms of the number of different addresses, right? So if I just take this set right here, n equals two, l equals one, m sub l equals one, actually that's probably more, less confusing if I do it this, this way. n equals two, l equals one, m sub l equals minus one, m sub s equals plus one half. We could say that that corresponds to this electron here, right? That's the quantum address for this electron here. And my m sub l value, I'm just saying that this is the minus one orbital, this is the zero orbital, and this is the, the plus one orbital. So then for this electron over here, the address would be n equals two, l equals one, m sub l equals zero, and then m sub s equals positive one half, right? Because I wanna have the spins be the same. That's Hun's rule. As I'm filling these, the spins will be the same. And then I'll start um, pairing those as I, as I continue. The last thing I wanna talk about is just a, a periodic table and how the periodic table sort of correlates with, so let's try to arrange all this stuff. Um, Let's do it this way. I think that should work. Okay, so here I've got my periodic table and I've got my little chart here. So if I'm talking about a hydrogen atom, a hydrogen atom has one electron and that one electron is gonna go into the 1s orbital. So as I'm filling it in, that first electron that's gonna go in the 1s orbital. Helium has two electrons, right? Two protons, two electrons. So my second electron is gonna go pair right here in the 1s orbital. For lithium and beryllium, 2s, so this is saying if, if I get to three electrons, that first electron's gonna go in the 2s orbital, the second electron's also gonna go in that 2s orbital. Then I'm gonna come across here to 2p, so that's boron, so now when I get to boron, I'm gonna start filling in that 2p energy level. So boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon, and when I get to neon, that 2p orbital is full, and then I start back over here with sodium in my 3s orbital. So once I get to 11 electrons, 
I'm going to start filling 3s. So that's what this you know this table here is telling us. Start filling 3s, and my first electron will go here, sodium, and then magnesium, still in the 3s, and then I'm going to go all the way across here to aluminum. So aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, and then now sulfur. Start pairing, chlorine, and argon. So now I've filled in all of my 3p orbitals. And I can start again over here with potassium and calcium in my 4s, right? So I'm going to go back over here, 4s, start over, 4s, fill in two electrons, potassium and calcium. And now we start in on my d orbitals, right? So now my 3d comes next, right? So I'm just working my way from the bottom up. And there are 10 uh, atoms here, and there are five d orbitals. So if we go back to our quantum number, chart, the d orbitals, there's five of those d orbitals. And those five d orbitals can hold 10 electrons total, two electrons per. And I would fill all of those in in this 3d orbital. It's a little bit messy there, but 10 electrons total, that gets me all the way across here. And then gallium, I would start filling in my 4p, right? Just going up this table, 4p is below the 5s. So I'm going to fill in the 4p next along this line, gallium to krypton, and just continue that process um, all the way up. I think that's all I want to say. Um, if this video clears things up, let me know. If it makes things more confusing, let me know. Um, yeah.